this kind of very sincere and very direct focus on what he was doing and, and a lot of careful thought, a lot of subtext going on, a lot of layers. There's so much going on in his movies and, and in the shows that it's, it's difficult to kind of pinpoint all the different things that are being brought together there. Jeff's work has been pretty legendary in experimental film circles and he has a sort of large cult following but uh, he hasn't really been drawn in to the art world that much until very, very recently. It's been overlooked quite substantially how much he relates to several major movements in the visual arts throughout the 20th century. Jeff was deeply interested in surrealism, in the writings of Baudelaire, also in the Dada movement, and I think his particular take on surrealism was definitely inflected by an early punk sensibility. This is the important thing to realise is that he wasn't just making movies, he was doing a lot of painting, a hell of a lot of painting and drawing all the time, which you get an idea of in the films because some of that kind of filters into them. The thing is what people tend to see is all these kind of references to popular culture, the 20th century and all the elements of that. You've got war, cinema references, but what you're not always picking up on is the other stuff that's behind that as well, which comes from an extraordinary um, background reading that he was doing in classical literature. He's always referencing early legends and myths. So there's a lot of those kind of archetypes, basically, he's drawing in on. He also began to develop an interesting project of presenting multiple screens, multiple projections at the same time. So not only was he showing several films side by side, overlapping, and some within frames, within frames, and within frames, but he also began to do live performances in front of those, sometimes involving painting on the surface onto which he was projecting, sometimes bringing in an ensemble cast of friends and family who would act out these kind of hilarious, campy, pulp fiction kind of roles. <laughs> It looks very kind of thrown together, the way he used to stage them and everything. It had that kind of crazy, playful, makeshift, mayhem kind of element to it, which was part of the fun. But actually behind it, there was a great mind working very hard, <laughs> staging some very interesting and amazing things. From the spider boy at the edge of town, you appear a silver shadow on the sea. The expanded cinema idea was, was very much his idea of expanding beyond the confines of a, a frame, a cinema frame, much in the way as with a painting, you don't want to be just confined within the frame of the canvas. So he's very much playing with that and going beyond the frame. At Tate, Rather than showing just the single films as you would normally see in a cinema, we've realized one of his dreams and one of the tendencies of his performances, which is to present several films at once, and in this case, in a large panoramic presentation. He was very, very interested in surrounding the viewer and having the viewer really part of the work. I worked with my father very closely on this project and um, he was very, very excited about the idea of the diorama setup of the, you know, the wraparound screen. He always loved the idea of that and I think it's fantastic that we've managed to achieve that so beautifully.